Welcome back, everybody. PM Trask. We're going to be talking about Batwoman. It's called Batwoman Detective Comics number 854. I don't think Batwoman is a detective. I think it's Detective Comics featuring Batwoman in number 854. I hope at least that Batwoman is not a detective because in reading, she's doing very little detective work. She's doing thug work. So it should be Batwoman Thug Comics number 854. Full-bodied woman, possibly going to be pretty tough. We know who Batman is, and I presume Batwoman should share a lot of the same mentality. I don't expect her family to have been killed outside of a theater. I don't expect her to have fallen in a cave. I don't expect identical backstory, but I do expect similar outcomes from whatever her story is. It opens with a guy running down the street looking behind him, and boom, a bat-like figure, shadowy figure, jumps in front of this person with breasts. I'm neither surprised nor not surprised that Batwoman has breasts. After all, aren't we saying with Batwoman that you can have a woman do everything that a man can do just as well, if not better? Why then is her physicality forced upon us? So she jumps in front of this guy, he turns into Delta Male, immediately. Please leave me alone. Oh no, what do you want from me? He turns into Sissy Man. And she says, you know what I want, Rush. Double entendre, obviously. Batman had double entendres, but they weren't, I need you to stop committing crime and maybe I want to have sex with you. But that wasn't what Batman was about when he apprehended criminals, even female criminals. So why does Batwoman feel the need to suggest she might have sex with the guy she just jumped in front of in an alley. Well, she corrects it then. She goes, I want your secrets. I was just joking a minute ago. I want where and I want when and I want her name. Batman's outfit is built for efficiency and combat and stealth because much of what Batman does is listen and spy and hide in the shadows, effectively minding his own damn business. He doesn't feel the need to grab and tie up every single criminal committing every single crime. He's heading for the top of the food chain, as is Batwoman. But unlike Batman, she's got to have a shiny outfit that glows, you know, to any city light. She can't hide very well. Her body parts are accentuated. I suppose Batman's body parts accentuated too. He's got, you know, the eight pack, right? Um, he's got like the ass cheeks accentuated by armor, I suppose, in the butt of the outfit. Batwoman has three prominent crotch displays in this magazine with genitalia exposed, outlined. I have looked, <laughs> I've read comics for many, many years. Rarely do you see the package, the boys, outlined. If ever, I don't recall ever seeing it. Now they have certainly profound, you know, cod pieces. When you have a, apparently this female hero who's taking on the persona of Batman, borrowing from his power and his distinction, the artist feels the need to accentuate her genitalia. Who's the target audience of this magazine? Is it someone like me who's read comics all my life and I just want something different? Delta males who feel the need to be dominated by women and, and put in their place? Is it teenage boys, I suppose, and girls, who don't quite know what genitalia looks like and they're very interested and they have no access to the internet. So they have to go buy Batwoman Detective Comics 854 to get a glimpse of female genitalia and, and ac accentuated breasts. Is it lesbians? Because Batwoman is a lesbian. She has to be a lesbian, right? There's no other way they could have written it. That has to be the choice. So that's their market, I suppose, and they write it for that. They use a advertising technique called the male gaze, which means it is written for males, although it's nodding toward a lesbian audience. Because lesbian women tend to focus on different things than, than hetero men that enjoy lesbian topics. Um, so this is written presumably for lesbians, but it uses the male gaze um, techniques for advertising. So she grabs this guy, she's torturing him. 
She drops sexual innuendo, double entendre. He goes, I don't know. They don't tell me. And then he says, I just know that she's coming. This is really cheap sexual innuendo. Anyway, she gets the information from Rush. Apparently he says a name or he doesn't. I don't know. Now notice that not only do they rip off Batman with Batwoman. By the way, I'm, again, I'm willing to follow a Batwoman series and enjoy it if done correctly. Um, she has angst. She's a tormented soul. She has a sense of righteousness. Um, she's tough. She gets hurt. She heals. And so on and so forth. But in, not only do they rip off and screw up the Batman canon, but then they have to bring in Batman in the middle of their stupid magazine to then validate her. In other words, if, if she's good on her own and she can stand on her own as a Bat woman or a Bat president, they wouldn't need to bring in the Batman or the husband, Clinton, to validate her uh, ability to do the job correctly. Anyway, she says, there are thir he, he says, oh, the 12 covens apparently have elected their leader. They throw in the white smoke has been seen. That's, you know, when the Cardinal of, when the College of Cardinals elects a new Pope, the smoke is white. When the election is not sufficiently strong in one direction, maybe two thirds of the Cardinals, they put chemicals in to make it black smoke, which means we've got to try again. Whatever. There's a nice little, you know, throw in there. I guess if you didn't know that, that's fun to know. Um, she says, no, it's 13 Coven. See, I'm smarter than you, Batman. <sighs> if you haven't sat there and yawned a lot, this might be the magazine for you. So he also says to her, get rid of the long red hair because in a fight, it, it's going to mess you up. One good pull, you're over. She's like, I'll take that under advisement. And then we see she takes off the hair. It's part of her mask. And, um, you know, puts it on its stand, right? As if, see how smart I am? Oh, my God, you're so stupid, you men. You don't realize that these are extensions. Okay, us men, we know when things are fake. We just put up with it because it makes you feel good so we can get to the end of the night and bang you. That's a huge clue to you girls who think you're putting one over on us with false eyelashes and, and uh, push-up bras. The stupid part about that is she's still wearing a mask. She's still concealing her identity. Her private life is still her life. But the second you grab her long red Sonya-like hair, it's going to pull the mask off. So she's so like, oh, aren't I smarter than you? And she's so stupid all at the same time. Okay, then after she's been out fighting crime, actually she was causing crime. Um, she, you know, she's attacking people, chasing them, terrorizing them, beating them up. That guy, Rush, was not committing a crime. And she's doing it in the alley, and she's suggesting sexual favors after she grabs him and puts her foot on his neck. I know a little bit about the law. She's committing crimes not stopping crime. Whatever, we could say the same about Matt, Batman, I suppose, um, in many ways. So let's, let's just um, grunt and bear it and go on. She then meets her girlfriend for breakfast, and she looks very awkward in her civilian clothes. Um, this is supposed to be a functional relationship. My really only criticism with this whole bit here where she's being told by the girlfriend who's a, like a real person who has a real job is that that woman in her civilian guise is demure, apologetic, soft. Um, she doesn't really have much to say about the major points that the other woman is saying, which is that you said you were ready for a serious relationship you're basically acting like a silly girl all the time. You're not showing up. You're probably out screwing other women and men, which of course is the highest crime in a lesbian relationship is if one of them has sex with a man. That's actually the thing that pisses them off the most. Um, and in no way does she show strength or certainty or discipline. 
you know, Batman in his civilian guise also showed the the um, advantages of having a focused life, of having a mission in life. Both it, now, unlike Superman, of course, who was also a Delta male or a f- apologetic soft male. Um, so Batwoman apparently feels the need to be apologetic, soft, and indecisive in her civilian life. She goes from this unsuccessful breakfast where her girlfriend essentially says, when you decide to be serious, tell me, and we can restart this relationship. In the meantime, don't bother me. She's like, and she sort of sits there and takes it. Okay, I'm sorry. Then she goes right from that to her apartment as she shares with her dad, who apparently is active duty military, retired, or or maybe on the he runs the mil, a military operation on the internet. And again, he's kind of soft. He's kind of apologetic to bat to Batwoman daughter girl, civilian daughter girl. Um, she's kind of in charge. Again, we get a picture of her crotch lifting weights. Thankfully, at least in um, sweatpants, so at least it's only an outline vagina. Look, I love vaginas. Who doesn't? Occasionally, there's a gay guy that really hates them. But everyone else loves them. We know that. You don't need to go, this is Batwoman. Here's a vagina. By the way, if you're a social justice warrior alphabet person, apparently Batwoman could literally be a man biologically, but identify as a Batwoman. Um, and if you want to go all the way and get all your social justice credits, there's your, your storyline. Um, she's wearing a shirt, USMA that's U S military Academy, West point. Um, which gives her a sophomoric adolescent, um, bent. In other words, why doesn't she have a USMC shirt on or, um, Navy SEALs? Or the real thing, like an accomplished professional. But instead, she's like, this is my college shirt. I'm going to call my college friends and talk about that time that we all did gelatin shots. It's just, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's, okay, so I guess we're narrowing down our market further to Delta males that want to be appreciated by lesbians and abused by them who are also um, 19 years old. That's our target market for this for this mag. Um, the dad is supposed to, supposed to be the butler persona in the Batwoman magazine. Oh no, I've torn the page, and I don't care. He's taking on the the submissive role to his teenage daughter. A daughter needs a father, not a submissive Delta boy. He then says, "Oh, by the way." Here's a gun. She goes, cool. It goes, he says he can get 10 shots. The real problem for anyone who likes Batman stories, canon, he doesn't use a gun ever, 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 ever. A gun killed his family. Uh, he gets in close using stealth and speed and musculature. And he does infighting. He doesn't even use a knife. He punches, submits, and when you use that stuff, his body is bulletproof. He lowers his head to protect the fleshy exposed part for bullets and knives and swords. Bounce, you know, it, it reflects bullets. It hurts like hell. He's got bruising, etc., from all the bullets, like a Kevlar vest effect. But instead, Batwoman, who's just as good as a man is now heavily armed. Now, we don't know if the gun is a tranquilizer. We don't know if the gun has some other effect than bullets. I guess let's finish the story. She leaves her dad. She dresses up again. She puts on her big fake hair, red Sanja-like. She goes out and she beats up a bunch more people. She goes, I know the where, I know the what, I know the when, but I don't know the who. So I'm going to beat up this entire series of people in all these locations to find out the who. Okay. If you know me, then you know I can't stand breaks in logic and stories. If you know where and when and what, 
Just go there at the right time, hide out, and listen, which is what Batman would do. Remember earlier she corrected Batman? She goes, it's not 12 covens, it's 13, you dumbass. Because I'm so smart, because, you know, woman, right? You know, if you don't know what a vulva looks like, you'll get a good good idea there, or outer labia. I'm just going to point out that the artist has this big kick, sort of prominent fight scene, two pages. It's good art. It is good art. It shows the sunglasses breaking, probably from the guy she's back kicking that has a Uzi. The funny thing is, in the setup pictures to that image of the fight, you'll see right here, there are 12 people, not 13. Also, nowhere in this image is a guy with an Uzi with sunglasses on. Nowhere. And she's perched above them, talking crap to these 12 people. And she says, I only need one of you to tell me who it is. She could have just kept her mouth shut, hung out for a minute, and they would have called out the person's name. The person would have showed up. But no, she's got to make stuff happen because she's a woman. She's a modern woman in modern times. She's kicking this guy with the sunglasses. Who knows where the guy came from or the sunglasses. She's left with one girl who she didn't assault so violently to be unconscious or dead, maybe. So there's one that's left conscious. She drags her off like a caveman, dragging a woman off by her hair to a cave. And you can see her little skirt starting to ride up. Um, she puts her on an altar and with one hand on her head, almost lovingly, almost. And the other hand looking like she's going to do something I'll let you figure out what that other hand is going to be doing. At that point, the leader shows up. And again, again, we have another crotch scene with genitalia suggested. Uh, now, the rest of the outfit is pretty cool of the head villain, right? The, the, the boss. Except that her skirt is purposely raised in the front. Because, again, if we're not sure what female genitalia looks like, they're going to go ahead and give you a really pretty decent idea here because, you know, they're going to try to help you out because if you're a stupid man, you may not know. And if you're a lesbian woman, you deserve to see the power of female genitalia. Okay, this is Alice in Wonderland. She's she's cosplaying in her criminal boss mode and she even uses old English lingo. But, of course, it's not good old English and I'm not sure if the if the writer just doesn't know how to write well or if the idea is that she's just a stupid Gotham person that's the next in line to a stupid cri criminal organization fighting a stupid hero who's pretending to be bat something and doesn't know how to speak or has even researched old English. The logic of her speech doesn't make any sense. Um... Batwoman pulls out her gun, says, nice to meet you. There's some more stupid dialogue that makes more sense. Batwoman goes, whatever, and discharges her gun. And that's the end of the story. Gripping, gripping dialogue. Not. Um, I hate everything about it. Eh, I like 1% of it, and it's not the 1% we're they think we're supposed to like. I wish that Alice was done in a proper way. It would be an interesting... There's a lot of material about Alice in Wonderland. It would be an interesting character. But you had to over-sexualize it from your social justice female point of view. Presuming we're just stupid consumers and stupid heterosexuals. This is about as angry as I get, right? Well, I get angrier. I'm not yelling because the sound levels couldn't take it. But it pisses me off that they screw up a possibly good Batwoman story and a possibly good villain persona and everything is done wrong. And she's not even a detective. Everything is done wrong in this magazine, folks. Don't buy it. Do not give them the set. Unless you love cringe. I know one of you responded you love cringe. I get it. I like Mystery th Theater, um, Mystery Science Theater 3000, 5000, whatever it is these days. I love it too. It could be so bad it's good. 
I guess this could be even worse to be good. If this was even worse, it would be that kind of bad to be good. It's just bad, bad. It's not cringe bad. Cringe worthy. It's not cringe worthy. It's just bad. I was handed this, so I'm not going to tear it. But I, I almost want to buy it just so I can destroy it. Okay. I guess you have some idea how I feel about this. Uh, this is PM Trask with the Pocket Jacks channel. Support your local comic book people. Support the good ones. There's a lot of good ones out there.